I don't know, man. <laughs> I guess I just got a thing for books with fuck in the title. Subtle art of not giving a fuck. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we're talking about an audiobook. Uh, this one is called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Uh, first and foremost, this I gave this two stars on Goodreads, so for those of you who don't want to hang around, who just want to know whether or not this is good, I didn't like it. Um, I much preferred uh, Gary John Bishop's Unfuck Yourself, and I'm going to go over that why, over the whys and hows of that here in a minute. But uh, this book, right off the bat, uh, there is... Did I say right off the bat already? I think I did. Anyways, ignore me. Uh, it's early in the morning. <laughs> it, is, it is right now 4 a.m. and I'm trying to get this done before I start my writing sprints with uh, my buddy Gregor. But, uh, so, th there is one good part about this book. Um, there's a chapter called Victimhood Chic that I absolutely loved. It deals with the addictive properties of being offended um, whether and, and focusing on things that you cannot control, like how other people think of you, that, that kind of thing. But the chapter, Victimhood Chic, had that been an article by itself, um, if it's on his blog, I would share that all over the place. In fact, I would say it should be required reading for this generation. But um, the rest of the book is absolutely just, it, it just drones on and on about shit that people already know. Um, it, it he uses pop culture to explain certain um, uh, not beliefs but certain uh, philosophical uh, ideals. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Marcus Aurelius uh, talks about most of the stuff that he does, and I only know that I haven't read Marcus Aurelius, uh, the philosopher, but I do know from Unfuck Yourself that these ideas basically come from the idea of Stoicism. Thank you, Gregor. Uh, Gregor let me in on this. Um, me and him were talking about it the uh, day before yesterday, I think. But um, the the author, Mark Manson, I hope I got that right. I hate it when I don't have uh, something to hold on to in the video so I can look at it, you know, the, the book title but, uh, or the author byline. The, the problem I had with it is I knew everything that the guy was going to talk about, um, especially since I had read this book, and the comparison is important which we'll get to because everything that is in this book is in this book. So, and I just got through reading this, uh, I don't know, two, three months ago, something like that. Maybe, maybe less than that. Maybe it was last month. I don't know. Time's a blur. Fuck it. Moving on. Um, so he talks about how uh, Dave Mustaine was, uh, and this might be spoilers. Do you need spoilers for a nonfiction book? I, I don't know if you do or not. But if you do, run away now. Um, the how a Dave Mustaine was kicked out of Metallica and even though he started Megadeth and became rich and famous he still feels um, bad about getting kicked out and wishes that he had been part of Metallica because Metallica was a bigger band than Megadeth so by his metric I and mean, he goes on and on about metrics it's like dude I understand Me the metrics we judge things by this is how we fuck ourselves up but with, with with that whole with that whole thing, he goes on. Like I said, he goes on and on with Pete Best. He he brings up Pete Best and how Pete Best was kicked out of the Beatles before their first album, just like Dave Mustaine was kicked out of uh, Metallica before their first album. And the 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 issue there is, it just goes on too long. Like I said, and I'm probably going on too long trying to explain how this dude's going on too long. But how Pete Best, uh, by comparison feels like you know, it was a good thing he was kicked out of the Beatles, even though the Beatles went on to be stupid successful, uh, biggest rock band in history. Um, but he's happier because he never would have met his wife had he been part of the Beatles. Whatever. Uh, he also goes on to talk about how Romeo and Juliet isn't a love story. If you have half a brain in your head, you know this. All of the stuff in this book is in this book. But just in a more condensed fashion. If you're someone who doesn't have all the time in the world, this book condenses all of the subtle art of not giving a fuck down to the important talking points. He cuts out all of the pop culture references. He does talk about Marcus Aurelius. He does talk about some other philosoph philosophers. Um, he does quote things, but it's very he's very short on it. This book up here is four hours shorter than Mark Manson's book. So you have The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, which is about seven, eight hours, and then you have Unfuck Yourself, which is 
anywhere between, I think, three and four hours. So there's a four hour difference here. Um, and it's just, oh, it, I also recommend, even though I bought the paper copy after I bought the Audible edition, it's because I really wanted a physical copy of this book. Um, it didn't change anything that I thought, but it did, it, it did back up some common sense stuff. These are not self-help books either. Uh, they are anti-self-help books. Basically, they're, they're telling you, un, unfuck your mind. You know, you, you are not this entitled POS that, that, you, that you think you are. Well, not that you think you're a piece of shit, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you, you are not chained to, to your debilitating thoughts. Um, that is not to say... That is not to say that depression isn't real, and that's something that Mark Manson didn't go into a great deal that Jerry, Gary John Bishop does. He does say, yes, depression is a disease, you know, there, it's a mental illness, all that, um, but I felt a more flippant attitude from Mark Manson than I did from Gary John Bishop. And as someone who, who is manic depressive himself, to be able to see that, that I can do these things and, you know, unfuck myself, which is what I did, what I, I did it even before I read the book, um, to actually just go and do, no matter if you want to or not, no matter if you're depressed, if you're manic, you're doing things anyways, but no matter if you're depressed, anxious, just go ahead and do. Can it, can it feel crippling? Yeah, sure it can. Um, but unless you have a physical disability to go wrong with a mental disability, I still say you need to get your ass out of bed and go try and do something. Um, but... Uh, the the overarching theme here is, of course, to get out of your own head and worry about the things that matter. And for my dollar, Unfuck Yourself does this twice as better at half the time. So anyways, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another audiobook review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!